Okay, we've got this little headset here. Let's do this every few thousand K of use as a grease we're going to use. It's a bit more biodynamic, organic, no panic style grease. The multi tool here, you can use a torque wrench. Simple, simple job. This probably cost you how much? How much does it cost in your in the bike shop to do this job? Uh, good luck if you've got disc brakes, hydro discs, and internal cables going through the steerer and the bars. And that's an absolute nightmare. That's going to cost you a lot of money, I reckon. How much does it cost to service a headset and SL7? And every mechanic, when the SL7 walks in, or the Cervelo S5 or whatever, one of those bikes where the cables go through, the brake cables go through the steerer, you know, an old Venge or something like that, it's just like, oh man. Every mechanic's just like, oh. What was once a simple job like this, this, this job's so simple I could do it with my eyes closed. Literally. So just take the front brake out. Well, I'll show you that this is probably the, the hardest part, is just get the front brake out. Back here. Always use the right tool. There we go. It's using a six mil to so five mil. Duraise caliper here on the front. Super easy to get off. Again, when you when you work on your bike, take your time. Have some carbohydrate. Don't rush it. And always pay attention to what you're pulling off and what order it's meant to go back in. And if you're not too sure, just take some photos. Again, take your time. Take your time. It's a very simple job, but also you can bung it up by putting something wrong. And you don't want to be doing that. So that's done. Leave the bolt inside the fork. Now we're going to undone the stem, taking the front wheel out. Actually, what we'll first we'll do is we'll tie this bike up on the tree, just in case it wants to fall off for whatever reason. To make a phone call or do whatever. Then that way the bike's, you know, so see that? The bike's on the tree. Simple, straightforward like that. So then we're gonna, yep, it's loose. Top cap. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? That is so easy. I've done this maybe a thousand times. Can't even do it with my eyes closed. Bolts down here. Try not to lose them this time. Got the fork out. Not a bad idea as well. Is if you've got any sharp edges inside the stem, file them out. Thompson are very good like that. They look pretty good. That's not too sharp. Yeah, they're pretty, I might actually file it a little bit. And that just makes it harder for your carbon steerer to get to uh, cut the edge off a bit. That's it, just taking the edge off. It's pretty good. You see with Bontrager stems, a lot of new Bontrager stems, they have a very small hole in there. So, Trek, Trek have been paying attention. That, and uh, we'll pop it out right like that. So what we're gonna check for is ring of death. Get a rag, wipe it off, and you see all the grit on the bearings in the bottom. It's, okay, it's just gonna wear things out. And uh, just give a wipe off. No ring of death there. It's pretty good. No ring of death. The ring of death is basically where the split ring, I'll show the split ring. That's where you know where your space is, which order they go in. This is your split ring here. Some brands made out of plastic. This Pragma is made out of a steel alloy. That, if you ride a loose headset, and then you get that play, and just ring barks, and eventually steel literally snaps off as you're riding. Catastrophic failure. It's a, uh, not pleasant at all. People die, people have been in wheelchairs from it, people have broken their teeth out. And some people just fell over, nothing happened. Lucky one, so it's perfect in there. No worries at all. This, this plug, I'll show you this plug here. Um, because safety's a priority here when it comes to looking after Natasha and everyone else. I'll show you how this plug goes in. Boom, look at that. That's how deep the plug goes, right? So that's some serious reinforcement like that. This is how deep your plug should go. 
the stock plugs that come with these Pragma frames or S-Works or Pinarellos. This is better. This is a cold other one. Detta also make them. Uh, Nitto make them. Longer ones, 70 mil plug. It's pretty extra insurance there. Snug, snug it up to about eight newton meters. My hands are pretty good with newton meters. Again, use a torque wrench. That's about seven. So that's that. That's, that's good. So the fork's great. We will put just a bit of ring and grease on here. And uh, give it a bit extra clean. Simple jobs here. I, I actually enjoy this job. This is actually fun for me to do. It's really good to ride a bike that's properly tuned. Loose headset cause some big issues. It's not too much, it's a thin slither on there. So see about that much. And then uh, fork tip down there. When you put your forks in the ground, just be careful with them, pop the top bearing out. And just grit and dirt in there. Grit and dirt. I feel like Oz Cycling. Steve from Victor Harbour, good channel, go check him out. Oz Cycling. See, it's a bit of dirt in here. And we're going to check that bearing. Still feels perfect. Still feels perfect. What time did you say that it would be, Tasha? I haven't told her yet. Oh, yeah. She's just home from three. Oh, yeah. She's what? She's home from now. Oh, yeah, cool. So, this yeah, headset quality in here is actually quite good. Quite good in here. It's top bearing. Little trolley puss. I'll put some grease around the bearing seals. Protect it from water and ingress. So yeah, simple stuff. I love just how easy the stuff is. It's like, you know, anyone can do this stuff. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Bottom hit, bottom bearing. Bottom bearing normally gets a bit dirtier because there's a road spray from your front fork and your wheel. Pop them out. So I come out. So that's that's dirtier. And I only did this a few months ago. Yeah, a few months ago, it's a bit dry and dirty. Bearing quality is still fantastic. This Pragma bearing is actually pretty good. This headset's about two years old. Still feels very very good. It's probably about 86, 85 percent wear left inside the cup. Scoop out all the grit. All the road stuff. And then put some grease on that bearing. And put that together and we're good to go. Absolutely good to go. Looks like the Velter this year, Roglic is gonna win. It's gonna be the first Grand Tour one with disc brakes. And that is gonna mean massive uh, discounts on rim brakes now. Rim brakes nail in the coffin, uh, especially with TP Pog running rim brakes and disc brakes in the tour. That's just that means that rim brakes now are really, really worth the le least ever. Even though I prefer them for road for sure, many people do. Market value it's good for us because it means that any and near new parts, near new rim brakes, bikes are <coughs> worth peanuts compared to uh, what they were worth this time last year. Split ring, we cleaned the split ring out. Put it back in the dirt. Where is it, Junior? I like it when you can find something quick. Just clean, clean the new dirt out of it. Yeah, these bikes, man. 
so cheap now. Yeah, rim brake bikes, so cheap. It's, it's never been better time to buy a bike than now, price-wise. People say, no, it's not. Like, new bikes cost so much, and, like, people trying to get heaps of money for their old bikes. It's like they're trying to, but they're not getting those monies. You know what I mean? Like, watch my Facebook Marketplace videos, you know. People are not getting what they want for their bikes if it's overpriced, over market belly. They're simply not. You can get an S-Works in Australia, S-Works SL345 for 2,000 bucks with SRAM red or less, money-wise. Same with Toronto, same with France. It's old bikes, people don't want them. You know, most people don't want them. <clears throat> All right, that's done. Top cap. And then we can set the tension of the headset. But that's another video. And, uh, yes, it's just a very simple job. And we always have that perfect steel. Oh, just turn that now, it just feels beautiful, nice and smooth. And that's how we keep our bearings lasting a long, long time. Something fell off again. Did it? Oh, the little thing from the brake. Make sure that little thing is not on, not off. But that's the vid. Natasha, maybe you can turn it off for us. And uh, we're good to go. Good to go. Okay, now we're going to set the tension. We're going to put we've got the front wheel in, we've got the brake in. We're going to make sure the bars are straight. It's pretty straight. And then we're going to set the tension here first. Make sure these bolts are, are dead loose. These, these stem bolts are loose. If these are tight, then you can't tension this properly. And then we're going to just do it up until we just feel it grabbing. And then we're going to grab the front brake. My, this bike front brake's over here. It might be your front brake over here, but whatever. You're just going to grab your front brake and rock it back and forwards. With the brake closed, and you can, I can still feel it like knocking a bit. So I do it in a quarter turn. No, nope. now the knocking's gone. I'm just going to give a tap on the ground. Knocking's still still absent, and I'll just now it spins freely. There's no like notchy notchy. If I did it up too tight, <laughs> bless you. If I did it up too tight, this too tight, then it'll be notchy, and you just destroy your bearing. So. You always your headset has to be free like that. Just bounce around like that. That's one test. And the second test, front brake, rocking the bike. No, no play, no play. So there's two tests. No play when you rock it, and then freedom like that. Okay. If you have play, tighten up another eighth of a turn. If it's notchy, you got to back it off. So there we go. Straighten those bars up. And now that is set, we can do these side bolts up. Just snug it. I ideally use a torque wrench, but my hands are very, very experienced. So I'll see mum on her bike, working on it for her, no worries. Let's snug it. Had a bit too much notable white today, I can't even get it in. Snug it. And that way, by snugging it, you make it, it clamps even versus just one side's clamped and the other side, you're just snugging it, okay? Five newton meters, which is not much. Get a get a torque. If you don't if you don't know what five newton meters feels like, please get a twenty, thirty dollar, fifty dollar torque wrench, so you can feel what that five newton meters feels like. And just snug it, snug it, and this gradually, slowly clamps it down versus just wrenching it up. And you snap your stem, you snap your bolt, and you end up in a wheelchair. Okay, so this is serious business. You look after your bike, and the bike looks after you. Check it regularly, boom, and boom, it's perfect. One final test, no play, ready, race ready, race ready.